So let's look at the various generations of ovarian uh, rejuvenation. And you're actually one of the first groups that's ever seen this before. Now, generation zero is the old style. This is how it was done first in Greece. Generation one is platelet-rich plasma or PRP here in the US. Generation two is enriched platelet factors or EPF, but it's become known as MPLAF. Now, MPLAF is just one technique in order to isolate these growth factors. Ultra is generation three. It involves combining generations one and two. Now, why would you do that? Well, it turns out that generation one lasts longer. So the rise in growth factors from generation one is reduced, but it lasts longer. But generation two has a much greater rise. In fact, there's data that says it's 10 to 15 times greater release of growth factors in generation two than generation one. So by combining one and two, you get a longer acting effect and you also get a greater release of growth factors. Generation four, I'll describe in a few minutes. And then uh, our latest generation is called generation R. Now this is for the most difficult cases. This is for women that have undetectable AMH levels. They're typically 50 or above. They have an elevated FSH. In some cases, very elevated, as high as 120 or 130 and no follicles are seen on ultrasound. Obviously, these are very, very challenging cases, and I'm glad that we now have a generation specifically for that group. At this stage, it's still investigational, but hopefully we'll see good results from it soon. So I'm not gonna go into great detail here, but generation uh, zero actually began some years ago, and what it involved doing was drawing blood, isolating the platelets, then doing a laparoscopy. And then the activated platelets would be injected into multiple locations uh, within, the, uh, within the ovary under direct visualization. Now, involving general anesthesia and involving surgery is obviously a very big deal and it's not ideal. And so then generation one, and this was developed by uh, Gen 5 fertility physicians, came along. Now, what that involves doing is using an ultrasound probe to, um, to identify the ovaries and then pa passing a needle through the top of the vagina into the ovaries and injecting the activated platelets there. So this is much less risk to the patient. It also allows us to see exactly where the needle is. And what's become progressively more apparent over time is that if you place the material in the correct location, you're gonna see a better response as opposed to what unfortunately many physicians do, which is just simply place the needle at any point in the ovary and inject either the activated platelets or some other material. Now we, we still do use this, it's relatively rare, but we use it for women that have premature ovarian insufficiency or premature ovarian failure. And for them, it makes sense because they need time. Only occasionally does a follicle begin to grow. Only occasionally can we get the egg. But when we can, the pregnancy rates are very high. And we've had good success with generation one ovarian rejuvenation with women that have either of these conditions. Now, we rarely use it for women that are reproductively older because it simply doesn't work as well. So generation two, we'll just call it implant because that's its, uh, its typical name, involves not injecting the platelets, but taking the platelets, activating them, and putting them in an incubator. And then we give it an hour or two, and many growth factors are released from those platelets. We then uh, uh, isolate the growth factors, not the platelets, and we inject the growth factors into the ovary, not the platelets. And as I mentioned, the concentrations of these growth factors are many times higher when you do generation two, as opposed to measuring the growth factors with generation one type of techniques. Otherwise, it's the same. It involves ultrasound guidance. It involves injecting the, the, uh, the material, the implant material into the same locations that occurs with generation one. And so this is 
a schematic that shows the two. On the left, you see the old style platelet-rich plasma, and you see that they're platelets, which are then activated, and then they're injected into each of the ovaries. On the right, you see platelets that are activated, and they're placed in an incubator, as I mentioned, for an hour or two. And then the enriched growth factors are injected into the ovaries. Generation three, as I mentioned, is a combination of generations one and two. It's called ultra. And I explained why it is that we combine those two. We've done a lot of work on this. This is not easy to do to combine them. And we have a patent pending on the ultra technique. All right, now what's generation four? We call that the ultimate. And we have really enjoyed exploring this. And so far it's been working well. It's not something that we push, not something that we recommend because we don't have the data back yet to see how well it works. We plan on publishing something in 2022 about the ultimate, uh, but at this stage, I'll just tell you how it's different from ultra. So it's basically a variation and enhancement of ultra. And what we do is we actually add other solutions to the ultra solution. And one of them is NAD plus. And I'll explain why in a few minutes, but we are, we're also injecting other things and we're looking carefully at the results of the various regimens that we're using. But the early data is that it does seem to more, be more powerful. Now, as I mentioned, this is not for everybody, but there are some patients that wanna do everything they can do. They wanna do the latest thing. They wanna do the thing that they think may give them the greatest chance of success. And for them, the ultimate is the way to go. Now, Generation R is our latest technique, and this is the one that I mentioned previously that's for the most difficult situations. And for a long time, I would see patients that came in for standard ovarian rejuvenation, and it just wasn't right for them. They had no follicles, and the hormone levels were just far from anything that would allow us to give any confidence that typical ovarian rejuvenation would work. And so what we do is we give special dosages of certain supplements. And we're actually looking at two different regimens now. There was a paper suggesting that lower doses of certain supplements might be more effective. But our experience is that higher seems to be more effective. And so we're doing a study where we're comparing lower versus higher uh, doses of these supplements. And what we do is intermittent blood work to see if there's evidence of a follicle growing. And we also do ultrasounds. And we have seen some excellent responses so far. One woman had had no periods for three years and had nothing on ultrasound. Her FSH was very high, undetectable AMH. And I saw her about three weeks ago and she actually had five follicles. I don't know what's going to happen with these five follicles. I don't know what quality of eggs we're going to get from them. I don't know if she's going to be able to become pregnant, but it's nice to see that at least in some cases, even in the most difficult circumstances, we can at least get to the follicle stage, which then gives us a chance to get eggs. And when we get eggs, then of course we have a chance to make a high quality embryo in a baby. So I don't know what's going to happen with this, but I'm very excited that we have this as the fifth generation of ovarian rejuvenation.